hope you're having a happy 2020. Uh, we're going to start off the year by going off all our anticipated games for this year, and there's more than just Roaring Twenty games involving the Cthulhu Mythos. <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of themes. There's over 70 games on our list, and of course we're not going to hit all of them that are coming out in 2020. Uh, we're going to miss some, and some of these probably won't come out in 2020. <laughs> yes, because that's the way Kickstarters roll. I know it? that because some of them were supposed to come out in 2019. <laughs> some, I think, were supposed to come out even before then. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that goes, but nonetheless, these are a list of just some of our most anticipated games that we're going to try to rush through and hopefully get you excited for them as well, going in order of publisher alphabetically. So we're starting off with what AEG is bringing out this year. There's Inner Compass, which is an abstract game about feelings and feeling nice with each other and trying to work your feelings out competitively. Uh, there's Lost Atlantis, uh, which is like a miniatures board game hybrid where you're exploring under the water and trying to find hidden treasures and such. And then there's Tiny Town's Fortune the expansion for Tiny Towns, which adds money to the game. So there's a whole bunch of new things you can use money for, as well as new buildings and monuments to play with. Uh, so some solid picks, I think, from, from AEG coming this year. We know in March we're going to get a bunch of smash-up news, including some copyrighted products, which they couldn't tell us too much about it, so, but I'm excited to see what that is. Yeah, yeah. But moving on, we got from Ager Games, Europa Universalis, The Price of Power. This is actually based on an old game from Paradox Games. And heavy sort of map placement control. We actually, I think we looked at it back in 2018. Yeah, we, we saw an early build of yeah, it. Yeah, very early build. And if you're into that kind of games, this looks really cool because it had this whole crazy kind of exploring and actually trying to go to different continents to get bring resources back. It definitely feels like if you love that 4X kind of game style. Big, heavy, involved 4X game. This yeah, that will do I it think for the, you. the Board Game Geek page already had people like making their own little maps if you want to do like Mongols or other countries and stuff. So if you want to go all in in that kind of style. You can go on it all in. If you just like one corner of the world, <laughs> uh, here's a game for you from Ankama Games. It's called Archaeus. Uh, and this is an Egyptian themed game from uh, Ludovic Moblanc and Antoine Boza. So like power team there. And it's a story driven co-op game where you're working together and you're exploring ancient Egyptian temples and stuff and you're trying to you know uncover lost relics. You have items between all of you. It sounded like a really cool theme and it's a little different than what I'm used to from those designers too. And I really liked it. This is a Kickstarter Pixar for me. I love the idea of when you go back to base camp, you sort of were upgrading along the way. So to me, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited and hopefully uh, we will see more of this. Yeah. But the next one, uh, I know you actually know a bit about because you played one of their previous games with a similar title, the One Deck Dungeon. That's right. So what's One Deck Galaxy? So One Deck Galaxy, it's the sci-fi version of One Deck Dungeon. I mean, that's really all there is to it. But basically, this is a, it's kind of a press your luck dice game uh, with the simple, you have a deck of cards, you go through a dungeon and explore it. The way I played it was, uh, I did it play a little bit as a two player, but you can play it solo. So that's what I, is really fun to me. I'd almost think just because One Deck in my mind thinks <laughs> yeah. one player. Small table space, yeah. Yeah, so I've been interested for a while to see what the sci-fi version will be like. Sounds like, you know, more of the same, which is good, mm -hmm. I think, which is fine. Um, uh, and then Awaken Realms. They're a company that has quite a few games. They've had some of the biggest games over the past few years. And in 2020, no exception, starting off with Ether Fields, which was another Kickstarter pick for us. And this is another, it's a big, sprawling fantasy exploration game. <laughs> yeah, it's about like going into like almost a dream world. I don't remember if it has an official name, yeah. but you play as these characters and this whole map. I'm really excited about this. This sounds like very heavy story uh, right up our alley. Yeah, it looks really cool. I think it's going to, and after playing, you know, a Tainted Grail, you know, we're already like, yes, we're ready give us for more, more of that. <laughs> yeah. And then they also have uh, the Great Wall, uh, which is maybe more on the strategic side of things. Uh, you are all different clans in ancient China defending the Great Wall, uh, but it's competitive. You're trying to get victory points. You can try to build different parts of it. It. Uh, but it seemed like a cool theme and they've, you know, again, just from their track record of these, both like the story games and also like the competitive minis games, they've really, they've done a lot of cool stuff. So our next one actually is Bandai, which usually isn't known as much for in their board game uh, <laughs> properties. Mm -hmm. But the next one's a surprise for me and that's actually the Evangelion card game. This is their Chrono System. We actually have the Godzilla game right behind me. I just got for Christmas, haven't had the chance to play it yet. And they had Naruto before. But I was shocked to see Evangelion because I'm like, I know it's popular, but it's never like, 
that's something you'd picture as much as think as a game. It's, it's back on like, Netflix now. It's ever it's the it hotness. <laughs> well, we can discuss that at a later point. In time. I'm a big fan. This is probably the first anime to me where I watched knowing it was anime. Like I don't count Pokemon because you're like, oh, it's cartoon. Right, right. And which definitely is a weird anime to start off with. Heady themes. <laughs> oh, that, I'd love for our entire camera says. Talk about your feeling and discussions for the last we'll see, how, yeah, we'll see how that translates to that one. Um, Blacklist Games has one. It's called Alter Quest. And this is a new one from the Sadler Brothers. If you're familiar with uh, their other games they did were uh, Brook City. Uh, I forget what the name of the other one was. But they all this one uses the same system as those games does. It's kind of like deck building card system. And uh, this one is a fantasy theme. Uh, you know, you're now you're going through. There's magic. There's wizards. I haven't had the chance to play their previous games. But people seem to like them. And they all are successfully funded and everything so um, uh, there's another one for you if you're a fan of those. Board and Dice have once again please bear with me Teotihuacan Shadow of Sheetle and once again probably butchered it but this is the ex uh, the second expansion I believe excluding promos for the uh, Teotihuacan series it's a Euro game that I had a lot of fun with and I Pretty sure you did too. Yeah, yeah. We did a review really of good. it. This, of course, just adds more things. The big thing seems to be technology, so you can really randomize that up that as well, because that's where you can do a lot of more weird stuff and get more advantages for when you do different things. I think that modular nature also just makes each game feel much different. You never have that, this is the winning strategy kind of moment. Yeah, and it's nice that, you know, also for an expansion, doesn't add a bunch of extra stuff. You can just switch in and out what mm -hmm. you like. That's always cool. Um, Hey, here's a, a small game you may know, Cephalo Fair Games. They've got Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Uh, we've been talking about this one for a while. This is the new, smaller, more compact retail edition of Gloomhaven. Uh, that's all new content, uh, but based on the original game, different ideas, new classes, new quests. But it's a smaller, more you know, uh, easier to digest version. So for newer players, they can pick this up and it's a little bit cheaper too. Gloomhaven, while everyone loves it, it's definitely the kind of game that would scare maybe people who aren't already used to board game prices or in the board game world. So yeah. something smaller could ease everyone in and slowly bring them to our side. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now talking about Kickstarters, <laughs> we're gonna get to a big company who has a lot of things and that's Simon. They've got a lot of games that were kickstarted and hopefully should release this year as well as games that they announced were going to come to Kickstarter. Some of them just announced uh, just before this recording. So let's start off with, I think for me, is one of the biggest contenders I hope to see on Kickstarter and maybe come out this year, and that's Ankh. Uh, this is Ankh, Gods of Egypt. This is from Eric Lang. It's the, I believe it's the final chapter in sort of the trilogy, I think I've heard it's called. I don't right, know if it has right. such a name with uh, Blood Rage and, and Rising, Sun. Rising Sun. But we loved Rising Sun. We thought it was really fun and clever. So. And I love the Egyptian scene, so I'm very excited for this. But some of the other ones, we got Munchkin Dungeon, which is a sort of a dungeon crawl Munchkin theme with if you can run away from monsters, but then you get shame points and stuff. And of course, minis. All of these will involve minis. <laughs> we Surprise. got the, the Bloodborne board game. We played the card game, and we actually really enjoyed it and thought it was very clever. Mm -hmm. So the board game obviously has some new twists on it and is in the blood game world. We'll see how that turns out. And also, two Zombicide products. We have the one that I th think the Kickstarter just ended, Night of the Living Dead, based on the movie. So now they have to make it on every zombie movie, make a zombie <laughs> version of that. As well as the second edition, which sort of tweaks some things and help rebalance some stuff. Final thing, this was just announced, and definitely want to hear your opinion on this, is Marvel United. This is apparently a new Marvel game and, uh, uh, and works with Spin Master games. You can tell the artwork is a bit more chibi but it is a miniatures game as far as I can tell, and I don't think we know much else beyond that except they've shown some characters. They did not show Spider-Man, <laughs> which I was surprised by. <laughs> it's an interesting one to leave out. Yeah, I mean, um, I like Marvel, but I also don't really like miniatures games, so you know, like the other Crisis Protocol that came out recently, I'm probably not gonna care about this, but it's interesting to see another other companies that aren't just uh, up for an upper deck than Fantasy Flight. You know, like everybody now has a Marvel game, <laughs> uh, so it's kind of, uh, yeah. I wonder see. how that licensing works. Is it like animation style, gameplay style? Is it, and we know the movies, it's grouping by like, you get yeah. Avengers, you got X-Men. <laughs> Maybe it's just buy on a game by game basis. They just Maybe. hand them out. I don't know. 
Who knows? That's some lawyers, not us. All right, so that's uh, the wall of CMON <laughs> games that we might be seeing may in or may this not decade. <laughs> um, Czech Games, they've got a, another one that's just coming out uh, another month from now. That's called Sanctum, and this is from the same designer as Adrenaline. This one is basically a board game version of Diablo or games similar to that. Uh, you're going around, you're competing to fight enemies and get loot, upgrade your characters, your abilities, your armor. Really interesting, and uh, if it's not up already, stay tuned to our channel. Uh, we did like an in-depth uh, interview slash preview uh, while we were at a convention the other year. It's now last year. <laughs> yep. Uh, looking at that game, and we'll have a review for it on our channel uh, around the time it comes out as well. But some really cool, interesting mechanisms, I yeah, think. Yeah, definitely really excited about that. Daily Magic Games has another game coming out in their sort of Valeria universe, and that's Margraves of Valeria. We actually did a Kickstarter pick, uh, preview, not pre uh, Kickstarter, right. but we probably talked about it in our video, of this game. Really fun little worker placement running around with your main character trying to do different actions. I just like the Valeria universe in general. Most of the games seem to be very fun, and they feel very cohesive in terms of what I'd like to see. Yeah, this one was cool. It was a, it was a big one. It was like an actual real full Yeah, this board. is not just a card game or dice engine like the original. Right, right. Welcome to is one of the most popular roll and rights, certainly one of our favorites, and they've got a new edition of it, Deepwater Games. It's Welcome to not New Las Vegas, not just Las Vegas, New Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, so same basic idea, you know, you're you're deciding where you're going to put in houses and st street numbers, but instead of houses now, it's in you're building a casino, and there's uh, some more advanced, weird stuff mm -hmm. going on, maybe a little bit more uh, involved than in the original yeah. Welcome to. Whole new map, which is kind of cool. From Dimension games, we have Dawn of Madness. I guess once again we're going into a dream world, but it's much darker and you're like shattered from your persona and you're trying to recollect who you are. I mean, playing the previous game, knowing story and theme, they just know how to do that. So I'm very excited with this. Each character actually has their own book. So if you play as like the nurse character or something, this is the nurse to make sure all the nurse events happen or something. So I'm very excited to see how this turns out. Uh, Eagle Griffin is coming out with a new edition of Kanban. It's called Kanban EV, which I believe stands for electric vehicle. So we're looking, you know, so we're the moving, Tesla version. That's right. We're moving into the future with this one. Uh, Kanban, all about manufacturing cars. Uh, really popular, heavy Euro game. This one is, I think, for the most part, the same gameplay. But what they're really reworking is the art, the look and feel of it, the components. And I'm sure there will be some little tweaks, some streamlining and hopefully, for our sake, the rule book a little bit better because <laughs> we've struggled to try to play this game in the past. It's a big one. Now, I really hope they have something in there involving shooting your car up into space. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe the Cybertruck will be in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, Everything Epic Games, I've loved almost all their games, and two of them that were sort of slated to come out last year look like they're coming out this year. And that first one is Grindhouse. This is a much simpler game involving a haunted house. It sort of has player elimination, but when you get eliminated, you come back as a ghost and you can start messing with people. So it just seems like a really fun game. The other one is Secrets of the Lost Station. This is their sci-fi version of their other previous secret game. I love that game and exploring it. It had the things I like in Betrayal without the things I don't like. <laughs> and right. much more somatic. And this is sci-fi related, so that's going to be really cool. And it's actually connected story-wise with the previous one. So we're going to find some tines of like where certain creatures come from from that might be from here and some time travel shenanigans so I'm really excited for it. Yeah sign me up for both of those things. Uh, fantasy play games they sometimes like to play their cards a little close to the vest or the chest however mm -hmm. you play cards uh, but we do know a few of their releases uh, probably the biggest high profile one is the Fallout Shelter board game based on the Fallout Shelter app mm -hmm. uh, this will be a competitive uh, it's a spin-off of a spin-off so there's a uh, Fallout Shelter and you're trying to manage it you know all your little people worrying about having kids and getting food. Yes. And, <laughs> and while it is a free-to-play app, this game is probably cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> In the long run, it might be. Um, and then, of course, they've got some new LCG releases that are going to be released. Marvel Champions is brand new, and they're going to start rolling out all of their stuff, uh, including, uh, you know, Thor is going to be out, mm -hmm. Ms. Marvel, uh, Wrecking Crew is a big one, and maybe some X-Men. That's just speculation. We don't know yet, but could happen. And, of course, uh, for Arkham Horror, uh, maybe our most anticipated release of the year, <laughs> they've got Barkham Horror, uh, which was Going to, it wasn't April Fool's joke, 
quote is now a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, enough people like they're like, yeah, you know what? We'll just do it. And <laughs> I'm all I for that. I think that's hilarious. And supposedly, I think there's hints that there might be next April Fool's a cat version. Mm. <laughs> so I'm hoping for that too that because good. <laughs> cats actually seem to be a very good thing to have in the Lovecraft universe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're good so, luck. Flat out games is going to bring us Calico, keeping with the cat theme. Uh, this is a game when you are designing these quilts, trying to make these really nice pretty quilts to attract cats to sit on them. <laughs> I mean, it's cats. You're going to love it. And we do love those puzzle games going together. So I think that's already something that's going to intrigue us. But what I'm curious is, do you think the Calico box will attract your cat? <laughs> oh, we're going to have to find out. Yeah. <laughs> See if a Calico can sit in the Calico. Oh, right. that's right. You actually have a Calico. <laughs> I really do. Um, all right. Now, Flyo Schemes is working on a Vampire the Masquerade game, the first of two on our list in this video. Stay tuned for more. Yeah, they really sent their license out everywhere. <laughs> They're <laughs> trying to be Marvel. the next Marvel. Yeah. Uh, this one is called Chapters, and this is definitely more on the side of a role-playing game. Uh, it's a story-based campaign game where you're going to be playing with other players, making choices, reading through chapters. I believe there's also like a board component to it as well, but definitely heavy on the narrative, almost like an RPG board game hybrid type of thing. So if you're like the Vampire Masquerade universe, you might want to really get immersed in this one. You'll have plenty of more games to uh, <laughs> increase that immersion. That's right. Now the next one from Fowler Games, I know you're a big fan of was Burgle Bros, the first one. That's but this right. is Burgle Bros. Two. <laughs> that's right. So what, what's the difference between these two? So this is another one that's, uh, you know, it's the adding the casino theme, just like Welcome To. Maybe that's the trend this year. Uh, yeah, this one's like the same kind of co-op uh, heist gameplay, but it's definitely streamlined. I think there's fewer floors you have to go through in this one. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how, you know, they had paperback became hardback. And I feel like this is kind of maybe in the same vein, like the evolution of that style. And so far, I've only tried Burger. Bros, the original solo, so I'm excited to try one of these with other people and see how that actually goes. I'm always up for it. It's just never getting the right number of people we want for games. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Um, Fun Forge has one called Namiji, and we got to try this one out and also in an early build. This is the sequel to Tokaido, which is uh, a game that we really love. And in this one, you're going around a map, you are fisher people, and you're trying to catch the best fish and explore and sail and please the gods, all kinds of things. Uh, it's kind of got like little mini games components, one that we really like the look of. Uh, fans of the original in this one too, I think. I mean, I love Takedo, so I already love this. It has that perfect, I think, clean look as well as the fun gameplay, especially the taking multiple actions until you're not last, I think is very clever. Yeah, it's a really cool mechanic. I like that in games. And now uh, this next one was definitely a big one for us before, uh, and that's Gale Force 9's Aliens, Another Glorious Day in the Court. Uh, this is... I mean, Gale Force 9, we've loved almost all the games they've, they've done and the themes. We actually got to try this one out. Very, very rough prototype. Yeah, the real question here is, will this actually come out this year or yeah, ever? From <laughs> what we could tell, one of the reasons that it had such um, a bumpy issue road <laughs> was because the Fox being the licensing Disney and stuff. Yeah. So that is... I guess a little bit better because that's more of not because the game's bad, but because but they've they been talking this up since 2018. That's true, and, and uh, it was in a rough stage when we played it like six months ago. So, ho I'm hoping it comes out and we see more of it. But yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, like, so it's got it's got a ways. Uh, Garpel Games has an expansion for Architects of the West Kingdom. It's called Age of Artisans. In this one, people are artisans are coming in and they have crafts. So now there's a whole component where you can uh, use crafts crafting type things. There's also uh, new player boards, new cards, and this one adds in, lets you play with an additional player. Uh, obviously, it's a series very well regarded uh, and interesting to see how they're going to add stuff to it as time goes on. Speaking of expansions, Greater Than Games has one for Spirit Island, Jagged Earth. This adds a bunch of new cool stuff and scenarios. We loved Spirit Island. We think it, it's very heavy and it's definitely ta brain taxing, but yeah. I think not in a bad way. We really enjoy it, essentially since it's co-op. Mm -hmm. So you sort of really work together in a way that doesn't allow for alpha gaming or just one obvious strategy. You really all have to talk. Uh, we've got Legends of Sleepy Hollow. This has been in a, a weird on-off state. Like, if mm. you read the Kickstarter updates, it just had a lot of weird issues and we kept getting pushed. Mm. I'm hoping it comes out. We did, a, I think, a preview for a while ago. Yeah. And it is sort of a... We really liked it. Yeah, the yeah. story campaign. It was very fun and interesting. So we'll see how this goes. 
Yeah, IDW has yet another one that <laughs> was supposed to already be out by now. That's Metal Gear Solid, the board game. You got some hands on time with this yeah, one. Yeah, and it's definitely, when I saw it, it was pretty much finished from the looks of it. It really felt interesting when playing the different characters. Like, I actually played as Otacon, and you didn't feel like you're like, oh, I just have a hacking skill. No, you aren't going to do combat and stuff. You play very differently from Snake, which <laughs> yeah. to me is a good sign. I'm excited. I really want to try. I love Metal Gear Solid games. So yeah, hopefully it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. Next one isn't really a new game, but it's a version of it that's interesting. That's Yellow Games Dark Edition of King of Tokyo. We actually finally got to see it packs unplugged, and I say the photos we saw online initially didn't do it justice. Seeing it in person, and it was much more colorful than I expected. I thought it was only black and white with some yellow. It had all the different uh, highlights, depending on the, the enemy and the cards. Really popped out a lot more and made it a lot more interesting. Yeah, it definitely looks nice. It's got limited things, so mm -hmm. if you want to get your hands on it, make sure you get your hands on it quickly. Uh, Another one that we got to try out is Divinity Original Sin, the board game, based on the video game. And this is a co-op uh, dungeon combat campaign narrative game, but... Uh, <laughs> How many adjectives can we throw Yeah, there? it's got a lot of adjectives, but feels different from that. But it's, it's really like an RPG in board game form. So it's like the video game RPG as a board game, not the role-playing tabletop <laughs> RPG. Uh, with no experience with the video game, uh, we definitely had fun and were interested in some of the mechanics that were going on in that one. So if you're a fan or not, this is a cool one to look at if you still need more campaign games. I think there's more coming still on this even on this list. So oh, there always will be. <laughs> no shortage. <laughs> Eclipse is getting its second version with Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy. It's definitely a long one and supposedly they made some changes here to help streamline it, which I think is helpful for us because I know that game drained us a bit more compared to some other games. I was really looking forward to find out um, yeah, what how the changes would work and if it would make me like the game more. Because this is another one I feel like that was supposed to come out by now, but it was a Kickstarter and you know. You know. Next up is Leader Games. Now they've got some big ones. Uh, should be out very shortly, actually. Uh, maybe being delivered for Kickstarter backers right now is Root, the Underworld expansion. Brand new classes, uh, very exciting new board map. There's also some other cool like upgrades they have in there um, for the previous edition of Root. Uh, and then they're working on a couple of very intriguing new ones. Oath, which is a, that's from the same designer as Root, and this is their next you know four letter word. <laughs> game. Uh, and this one sounds really intriguing. I don't know if there's a ton of gameplay, like specific gameplay details yet, but it sounds like it's a legacy game in the sense that as you play, it will affect the outcomes and can change the, the rules of the game. But they say you don't need to play with the same group. You don't need to play with the same people. You could play a bunch of games solo and then just play with someone else the next day. And, you know, things will change and evolve, but you don't have to stay with one group of people. It'll just be different. It sounds like to me it's going to take the legacy aspect. But one of the problems and why you always want to play with the same people is when you play a legacy game, you usually you could be playing either as a character or family and then like if you swap someone out like oh someone ruined my family plan when this if it's just the world you're like it doesn't matter it's just right. this is what the world looks like now really which intriguing might be helpful and nice but the I'm excited for his fort yeah yeah so this is a reworking of another game that was a Grant Rodiek design and now it's about kids throwing snowballs <laughs> um, well, it's his next one <laughs> yeah right uh, and yeah it sounded cool you're building forts I'm really excited I mean <laughs> Rudy is definitely one of my, I mean, after playing it, it's, it's it's a game that if you haven't, you should try to get a chance to. It's 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 made, I think, a strong impression for me at least. Absolutely, yeah. So we're looking forward to anything mm -hmm. they do. So level ninety nine has some cool stuff. There's the Millennium Blades Collusion, and this should be the last expansion if I recall their Kickstarter. Hmm. Uh, sort of wrapping up the whole Millennium Blades saga. This is this crazy game, sort of mocking the whole TCG in essence. Not just the format, I guess, just how it works in the real world, and also the anime is based off it and stuff. So, <laughs> magic puns, Yu Gi Oh puns, jokes about tournaments or about selling singles, it's all in there. And the other one is Seventh Cross. Now, they said this game is you're playing as sort of the uh, secret agents of a church trying to keep the, uh, the, the weird and the strange from around the real world. I know the TV shows that take that premise we tend to like, mm -hmm. you know, your X Files and stuff. <laughs> But this, they said this sort of an ex exploration, and it takes the exploration of, they said, Betrayal ha House on the Hill, mm -hmm. moving around, but combat style, so it's not as much with a traitor. So 
We've hmm. seen this uh, theme already, if you recall. Right, it was in Exceed. Yes, uh, yeah. apparently this is 1920s, which I would not have guessed. With the- <laughs> a couple of new releases that are big ones from Matago, uh, Kemet Blood and Sand. So oh, this is a big one. This is a brand new edition of Kemet, and they recently were reworking like the rule book. They had there was a 1.5 rule book yeah. update, yes. <laughs> and I guess they decided that wasn't good enough, so they're doing a whole new version of it. Mm-hmm. New rule book, new components. This is a Egyptian-themed area control gods and magic. Yeah, it's really fun. It's all about moving your troops around and then getting these powers based on three different trees, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. And of course, there's these cool little monster minis you may or may not get to summon. Yeah. So I'm really curious because they said there's like different new minis, new artwork, and some new stuff. I wonder if there's going to be a new way for it to cross over with Cyclades. Oh yeah, <laughs> we'll see how it stands up to the original because we've, we've been playing that for a long time. And then they have an expansion for Treasure Island, which is the game about drawing on a treasure map and trying to find treasure with the dry erase marker. Uh, this is Captain Silver Revenge Island. Uh, this one adds uh, some new, there's like a new module with some new cards for uh, the, uh, is it Long John Silver is the guy? Long John Silver, <laughs> yeah. And then there's some new maps so you can explore different layouts of the island and hide treasure in maybe some more nefarious places. Yeah, I really enjoy this game. I know some of the people who it were a little bit cold on it like they thought it's up, but I, I thought I it's still a lot of fun I need to play it again I love the concept yeah. I think I, I need to play it more to just know how I feel about it going way back now <laughs> to Vampire the Masquerade we have the legacy game of it and that's Vampire the Masquerade Heritage you'll be playing through your sort of family line in this game you know I really think if you take a legacy game and don't base it on another game like this is based on a property but it's not as far as I know not based on another game right right I know Seafall wasn't as hot with them people but I think that will just make it a lot more interesting. Yeah. So to me, that's piqued my interest a bit more, even though I'm a little bit tired of legacy. I'm intrigued in it for sure. It sounded cool. You know, your vampires have descendants and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, and they can be turned. Interesting stuff at work. Uh, Now, North Star Games has one that's finally going to be coming out this year, and that's Oceans, the sequel to Evolution. And I think it might be called Oceans and Evolution Game. Maybe they dropped that by now. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, you're trying to build the best creatures and let them survive, evolve, eat food, and grow, but now with ocean life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I, we've said a lot about this game already, but we're still excited to play it, hopefully yes. very soon. Yeah, uh, think, according soon. to the tracking number I have, within a day or two of this video being released. <laughs> so, you can get your hands on that shortly, we hope. Mm-hmm. Pandasaurus Games, not only do they now have a new icon, uh, <laughs> right. so you can check that out and give us your thoughts on whether you like it or not, but they also have Godspeed. This is a game where you're sort of different countries competing to grow on the planet and get different resource technologies, but it uses this clever weird bidding style where depending on where you place workers and bid, you might not have the workers you want for later on because you use them to bid on the earlier rounds. Taking a mechanic and putting it on its head, I think, is is now catching my eye a bit more. Pandasaur is definitely a strong... They're one to look for when they have mm-hmm. a new game, I think. Um, now, Portal Games, they've got a few new releases that we know about so far. There's Detective Season 1, which is uh, sort of a, a lighter uh, launch point for the Detective Modern Crime Board Game series. A uh, few cases in it, uh, you know, narrative, crime-solving game, but this one may be more approachable for newer audiences, maybe playing a little quicker. They've also got Stronghold Undead, the second edition, which was on Kickstarter, and we got to try it out, and that's a reworking of the Stronghold Undead expansion, head-to-head, very involved, like tower defense, but you're playing two sides, wall good defense, versus evil. <laughs> yeah, wall, castle defense, something. <laughs> uh, they've also got a, um, you know, there's um, Imperial Settlers expansion coming out too, so uh, some cool stuff from Portal as usual. Ravensburger has announced a Back to the Future board game. We don't know much about it. It. However, they this is not their first time with a licensed game, and judging by you know horrified Jaws and some of their plenty others, they do a pretty good job at giving the license their fair share of at least of a reasonably fun board game. Yeah, so I'm interested in this one because there's been a couple Back to the Future, like a card game or little board game here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Are but... we counting that you can use the DeLorean and uh... <laughs> yeah, and Cult Express? We're counting that. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll see if this one uh, is able to do anything special with that. Uh, Red Raven Games has Sleeping Gods. This is another campaign storytelling game, uh, and it's another one that uh, you can kind of you know stop playing when you want to and save your game and come back to it. But you're exploring a world. You're out at sea and you're you're making discoveries, checking out islands, reading things. It's a, a storybook world map exploring game. It's a story game. We're in. Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, after Near and Far, people love stuff like that. Probably one you want to check out. 
Renegade Game Studios has the Scott Pilgrim Mentors game that should be coming out. It's mm -hmm. a Mentors game with all the Scott Pilgrim characters. They had a Kickstarter a while back, so if you're into that, check that out. They also have a, a cooperative version of The Fox in the Forest titled The Fox in the Forest Duet. This time you're working together to go through the forest and try to collect gems without getting lost in the forest. And of course, I know for me, because it was on my top 10 list, the Power Rangers game has some expansions. Hopefully they come up this year. This will actually include the expansion for all of every ranger Jason has played. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. all like four colors, but I think five rangers. We'll see how that goes. I expect Renegade will have 12 other games because they had just always have so many. <laughs> they have a lot of stuff. Um, now, Restoration Games has a few to look for. Return to Dark Tower will be on Kickstarter very soon. This is the big remake of the original Dark Tower game. Mm -hmm. uh, Giant Electronic you Tower. You got to play it. Yeah, it was really cool. Some really cool app-based tech stuff. Uh, I'll see if they manage to get it out this year yeah. in time, but it'll be on Kickstarter at least. Uh, and then there's also, of course, the next entries in the Unmatched series, uh, the fighting game. So they're going to have, we know, Cobble and Fog, which is Victorian-era fictional heroes. Uh, and then there's also the Jurassic Park one. Those are the only ones that are officially announced, but maybe we'll be seeing some of the other stuff they've been talking about, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We'll see. Um, and I think there's also a new Downforce expansion that is coming from them too. Shadowborn Games... Oh, Sworn into the Deep Wood. We've talked about this game a lot because it is just so much fun to play. It was on Kickstarter, did very well. We're <laughs> in the game as promo cards, full disclosure. Our first promo. <laughs> but we didn't learn that until late. Right, right. That wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that was. We any played part a of lot. Of, we had a chance to play a lot of it before that was even brought up as an option. <laughs> Do genuinely really like this one. And again, another heavy campaign story game. But if you like that kind of thing, this does it really well mm -hmm. in some very innovative ways. And. Out of all the games, they definitely seem the most protective of understanding people don't want spoilers. Yeah, right. So we won't spoil anything else about it. Uh, now, Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective, one of our favorite storytelling games and a lot of people's. Uh, Space Cowboys has a new expansion for it. This one is the Baker Street Irregulars. Uh, it's another set of cases along the same lines as the other ones. But I believe this one uh, is kind of like Detective Season 1. Also maybe works as a good jumping on point for younger players or people who are newer to it. Maybe the cases are a little bit easier to solve but they said there's still some cool new twists in there so if you're familiar with the other games you'll have fun with this one too i mean i i love the game so i'm i, I just give me more cases <laughs> give us those cases <laughs> steamforge games is known for their dark souls board game which finally finished sending everything out or for the most part but they have a couple other major video games turned into ninja games coming out hopefully this year We've got the Delve May Cry game, The Bloody Palace. This is a competitive game where you're trying to get style points in order to show off and get be the best demon hunter. But we also got Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game, which is all about trying the great big hunts and trying to hunt the get the most points depending on the scenario and uh, maybe being careful around that Thunder Maw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should be interesting. We'll see. We weren't crazy about Dark Souls. I heard mixed things about also the Resident Evil game. Uh, but... Um... They're big licenses, and people are fans of these games. Well, so for the first part, most part, they do great minis, though. That's I that's mean, what seeing counts. those minis together. So at the very <laughs> least, you will have quality minis, especially if you're a painter. Yeah. Uh, now here's one from Tabula Games called Ikeon. I think that's maybe how you say it. This was a big hit on Kickstarter recently. I'm pretty sure it was a pick when we did it. It was. And uh, it's like just this very cool design of very cool miniatures. This really creative world of creatures and, and, and robots. Are there robots in it? I don't remember. Uh, but it looked really I don't remember neat. if it counted as a robot. It's like this giant creature. Colossus, yeah. basically. There's, I think that might be the better term. I think that's what they use. There's, I think one of the minis is like a colossus. Uh, but it looked like some really neat uh, gameplay to go along, too, with those awesome-looking molds and minis. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one that I remember thinking stood out from the rest, and there are a lot of minis on Kickstarter, so that's something. Well, taking minis to a whole new place. We have three-headed monster with our Beyond, hum Beyond Humanity colonies. If I can pronounce it correctly, this game takes minis to a new level by adding like chips and circuitry in them. You'll actually be connecting buildings and also scanning them into this phone app and they'll you're fighting over, I guess, control of the city. You're, it's a semi-cooperative game. You don't want the city to be destroyed. <laughs> But you want to be the one in who has the most power at the end of it. So it's this really crazy new take on it that we got a chance to preview and it was just 
something we haven't seen before. This is one that was on Kickstarter and I have no idea if when it's released you'll be able to buy it because it's one of these games that was like, it's $200 and probably will be hard to do at retail, but maybe through their website or something or at conventions they'll have copies. I mean, it could be like Gloomhaven where all of a sudden just everyone needs a copy. Yeah, it could be a massive hit, but really crazy stuff going on in that game. Definitely look for more info on that. Uh, now, Thundergriff has another one that was from Kickstarter, Tang Garden. This is a nice little game where you're all just making gardens together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, an Asian theme and you're, you know, it's set collection, tile placement. You're trying to get the best pieces, you know, little decorations for your garden. One of those nice kind of pleasant, relaxing sort of games, sort of maybe in the vein of Takedo, I think, mm -hmm. that seems like fun. It's definitely the kind of thing that's up your alley, I know. Oh yeah, I'm a sucker <laughs> for it. But uh, keeping on with the Thunder theme and companies, Thunder Work Games, uh, known for their role player series, has two new entries in that. We have the role player Fiends and Familiars expansion, and then as well as role player adventures. Now, this takes the role player to the next level. You will now play as the characters you roll and play as. So it's almost come full circle. We've <laughs> right. come back from what it's initially taking reference from. Yeah. The, so or your D and D creation. <laughs> right. Not a full RPG, but it's definitely like heavy, much right. heavier storytelling, storybook experience. I mean, so I'm far stoked. I feel like. Every game in the role player entry, we definitely enjoyed. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to this. High one. expectations. Yeah. Maybe, maybe my most anticipated of the series so far. Um, Legendary is one of our favorite games. And Upper Deck, of course, is going to have a full slate of releases. They usually do what three or four per year. Uh, I don't think we know about any of them beyond the most, the next closest one, which is uh, Heroes of Asgard. So it's going to have some more of those. Uh, as guardian characters from the world of Thor mm -hmm. to get involved with. This is a smaller expansion. So uh, if you don't have enough legendary stuff, I know I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to this. We'll see what else they do. For us, Van Ryder Games is particularly known for us for their solo player game, Hostage Negotiator. Mm -hmm. And they have apparently another Hostage Negotiator. I thought they were done. <laughs> <laughs> this is the but, final one. This right. is it. So this is career. Yeah, and this is like, uh, actually has a campaign mode. So, you know, the other ones were all just standalone scenarios. Now you can play through and you'll actually experience stuff still fully solo. I think maybe did they add like a co-op option at some point in this one? They might have, but definitely geared towards a solo player. Take your hostage negotiating skills to the next level. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah. they have another new solo game and that's Final Girl. Now this plays on the trope of how there's always that one girl who survives at the end of slasher films. You're going to play as that girl, but it sounds like you're going to get the chance to fight back. Yeah, this is also I'm really excited for. I think this uses kind of the base of Hostage Negotiator too, like sort of the similar starting out point. Uh, and as someone who I feel like, like the, originally Buffy the Vampire Slayer was kind of a take on that idea, like of the what if what if the last girl fought everybody and killed them instead of being killed or whatever, or being terrified. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that's such a fun concept. And there's so many, you could do so many things with that. Like it could be sci-fi, it could be monsters. Well, yeah, no, uh, first thing came to mind for me is Cabin in the Woods. Right. And it's like, yeah, just pick the monster you're fighting. You know? And it makes sense as a solo game because it always is. Right. And so being solo. It's perfect, it's perfect. <laughs> and we're going to finish our list off with one from Weta Workshop. This is the District 9 board game. This is the interesting one based on the movie Miniatures Game. It was on Kickstarter, then it went off, and then they came back with a bunch of changes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see if those changes were enough, if they really, people respond to those now that once it's actually released. I'll lead up, like uh, the Evangelion game, while there is combat in it, <laughs> Both those properties are not things I think about fighting. I think about weird existential discussions. Right, right. It's kind of like the version of, I feel like like back when NES schemes, like if there was a license, it was always just a platformer, you know, or something. Like no matter what, like this character now just punches people because we don't know what else to do with them. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Could, could be some interesting stuff there. Now this is just like the tip of the iceberg of all the stuff that come out. I mean, we didn't even mention that Stonemaier Games has a bunch of code names. We know that like, I think it's Sand and Cloak, as well as... The this second wingspan expansion is slated for this year too, so I'm very excited. No doubt there's gonna be more surprises as the year goes on, but this is already a strong list and there's already, there were like 50 more we cut because we just don't have time to talk about mm -hmm. them all. There's a ton of things that are gonna be released this year. Gonna be really excited to see them all. Uh, it's certainly it looks like the, the biggest trend I'm still seeing are minis and campaign games. I mean, that seems to not be going away at all. Well, to be fair, a big chunk of that is just CMOM right there. And that's actually the one I'm keeping an eye on because almost all those are were Kickstarters. And I know they've had some issues being delayed. Like they had that time machine, if you recall. They still haven't 
mm. pulled the trigger on that yet. Right, right. So I'm curious how that will go out. Because like I said, I'm really hoping um does come out. I want to back the game. <laughs> <laughs> we would love all of these to come out. Some of these will be playing within the next couple weeks even. Mm -hmm. So really exciting. Let us know. What ones are you playing? Which ones did you back? Which ones are you gonna buy? Which ones do you think are overhyped? What's underrated that we didn't talk about that you're looking forward to? Comment below, because there's no shortage of stuff to talk about here. Uh, it's gonna be a large year, appropriately for 2020, because it's two crits. Yes, <laughs> so let's keep those 20s roaring. <laughs> I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. This has been Roll for Crit. We want you to like and subscribe, and if you have the chance, take a look at our Patreon. Stay tuned to our channel for tons more tabletop gaming content. You don't want to miss it.